All right, so let's go ahead and do some examples with uh, using the definition of the derivative to uh, calculate the derivative at a point. So, uh, yeah, there are shortcuts for derivatives, but um, that's going to show up in a much later video, because uh, here we just introduced the derivative, so we want to do everything by definition. So, uh, here, example one, f of x equals 3x squared plus 1. Find the derivative of f of x when x equals 2. So this is just a straightforward uh, example of, um, you know, find the derivative. So this is just in plain English, right? Find the derivative of f of x when x equals 2. So um, that's uh, f primed of 2 equals limits as h goes to 0 of f of x, or sorry, not x, uh, 2, f of 2, let's uh, erase that there, f of 2 uh, plus h minus f of 2 all divided by h. All right. So now we just have to figure out what's f of 2 plus h and what's f of 2. So we'll come down here a little bit. Uh, let's do uh, f of 2 plus h. So that's going to be f of 2 plus h. f of x is 3x squared plus 1. So f of 2 plus h is 3 times 2 plus h squared plus 1. All right. So that equals uh, 3 times, if we FOIL that out, we get 4 plus 4h plus h squared. And then plus 1 is still out there. So uh, if we distribute the 3, then what we have is a 3h squared, all right, 3h squared, plus 12h, plus 12, and then plus 1 gives us 13. All right, so f of 2 plus h is 3h squared plus 12h plus 13. Ugh. All right, and now uh, what's f of 2? f of 2, a little bit simpler, uh, f of 2 is going to be 3 times 2 squared plus 1. So this is uh, 3 times 2 squared plus 1. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 1 is 13. All right, so f of 2 plus h is 3h squared plus 12h plus 13 and f of 2 is 13. So let's go ahead and uh, erase this work here. Ideally, we'd just do it off to the side, but I um, want to reserve this space for another example. So uh, this equals the limit as h goes to 0. Remember, always include this limit notation here until you've actually evaluated the limit. Uh, it is easy to forget, but it should always be there until the limit's actually evaluated. So f of 2 plus h, that was a 3h squared, 3h squared plus 12h plus 13. And then we have a minus f of 2, which means minus 13 now. All right. And then on the bottom, we still just have h. So let's go ahead and erase the rest of this down here. OK, so now we just uh, simplify. So uh, plus 13, minus 13, those cancel. That's great. Uh, and we want that to happen because we want to end up with just stuff with h in it so that we can cancel this h down here, right? Because the idea is to simplify the difference quotient. Remember, this is a difference quotient, right? We want to simplify this uh, so that this uh, factor of h down here that causes problems for us, we want to get rid of that, okay? Because when we substitute h equals 0 into here um, with the direct substitution, this is causing us problems, so we want to get rid of it somehow. And now we can, right? Now we can because uh, we just have 3h squared plus 12h all divided by h. So let's pull out that h. So what we have left is uh, 3h plus 12. Yeah, there's a factor of 3 we can pull out also, but um, it, we don't really need to. It's kind of unnecessary. Just extra work. Okay, so um, now these h's are going to cancel, and that's great. So now what we have is uh, limit. Well, let's go ahead and just write that whole thing over. Limit as h goes to 0 of 3h plus 12. So now this we can do by direct substitution pretty easily, right? It's going to be 3 times 0 plus 12, which uh, equals 12. All right. So that's the derivative of f of x when x equals 2. So if f of x is 3x squared plus 1, the derivative of that is uh, 12 when x is 2. In other words, f primed of 2 equals 12. Okay. So um, that's example 1. Let's go ahead and do example 2. So here, uh, g of x equals negative 4x plus 7. Now we want to find g prime to 3. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, g prime of 3 
So this is slightly different wording from example one, right? This just straight up said, find the derivative of f of x when x is two, and this one just says uh, algebraically, find g prime to three. But remember, it's two different ways of asking the exact same question. Uh, find the derivative. So this is going to be a limit as h goes to zero of, now we have g, of uh, three plus h minus g of uh, three, all divided by h. All right, so now we just got to figure out, all right, what's g of 3 plus h, and what's g of 3? So let's come down here and do that. g of 3 plus h equals what? Well, g of x is negative 4x plus 7. So g of 3 plus h is negative 4 times 3 plus h, and then plus 7 out here. So when we simplify, we have a, uh, distribute the negative 4, we have negative 12 minus 4h, and then plus 7. So this is actually just, uh, let's say, minus 4h, and then negative 12 plus 7 is uh, minus 5. Okay? So what about g of 3? Well, g of 3 is going to be a little bit simpler. That's good. So g of 3 is going to be uh, negative, 4, oops, negative 4 times 3 plus 7. So that's negative 4 times 3 plus 7. Right? And that's negative uh, 12, and then plus 7 gives us negative 5. All right, so g of 3 plus h is negative 4h minus 5. g of 3 is negative 5. So let's go ahead and put those in here. So uh, we'll erase a little bit of this. And then this equals um, limit as h goes to 0. So remember, don't forget that until you've actually evaluated. Uh, this is negative 4h minus 5, and then this was minus negative 5, right, so minus uh, negative 5. And then all of that is still divided by h. Okay, so uh, what happens next? Well, minus 5 minus negative 5, that means plus 5, right? So let's just go ahead and uh, simplify that right now. So minus negative 5 means plus 5. So now we have minus 5 plus 5. So those cancel, and that's great, because now we're left with negative uh, 4h over h. So this is the, the limit as h goes to 0 of negative uh, 4h divided by h. So h is cancel, and then we have uh, limits as h goes to 0 of negative 4. And remember, a limit uh, of a constant is just that constant. No matter what the variable is, no matter where it's going, uh, it's just a constant here. Negative 4 is always just negative 4. So that's the answer here. All right. Now, uh, if we stop and think about this, that's actually not that surprising, right? Because um, here, we go back up here, what kind of function is that? Uh, it's, it's a linear function, right? It's just a straight line. So g of x equals negative 4x plus 7. It's a straight line with slope negative 4 and y-intercept uh, 7. So remember, um, remember what the derivative is, it's slope. So what are we really asking here? We're asking for the slope of a straight line. And we know what the slope of a straight line is. It's uh, this number here, negative 4. So it's not surprising that our answer was negative 4. Um, now, what's kind of a subtle detail here is we asked for the slope at a particular point, but it's just a straight line. So it has the same slope everywhere. So uh, the fact that this is 3 doesn't actually matter. Okay, We could put any number we want in here, any number at all, any real number. And uh, we're going to get the same value here. Okay, we'll just end up with negative 4. Because uh, this function is a straight line, okay, g of x is a straight line, so it has the same slope. Um, let's go back to example 1 and interpret this in terms of slopes. So uh, remember, we found f primed of 2 equals 12. So what that means is that uh, if we were to graph this 3x squared plus 1, let's go ahead and do that just real quick. Uh, 3x squared plus 1, if we just draw a graph of that real quick. Here's our x-axis, uh, here's our y-axis. So this is probably going to be a pretty bad rough sketch. Um, but here's a 3x squared plus 1. Yeah, I was right, that's terrible. Okay, um, I guess it could be worse. So this is 3x squared plus 1. So uh, we found f prime to 2 equals 12. So that means that uh, if we put x equals 2 over here, so here, uh, the point where x equals 2, that tangent line, uh, the tangent line that's right here, has slope uh, 
equal to 12. So the slope of this tangent line is uh, equal to 12 because that's f primed of 2. So the derivative at x equals 2 is the slope of the tangent line there. And it's also the same thing as the slope of the curve. So remember from the last video, um, the slope of the curve and the slope of the tangent line are the same thing. So we can say that uh, 3x squared plus 1 has slope 12 when x is 2. All right. Um, one last thing to point out here, in example 2, uh, you can also interpret this in terms of tangent lines, but uh, when you talk about tangent lines to a straight line, it's kind of weird, because uh, you just end up with the same line anyway. So you can still talk about that, but it's just, it's just kind of strange. Um, but, but, you know, it, it makes sense, it's just weird. Um, so that's example 1 and 2. We'll do one more example in the next video before moving on to different kinds of functions.